one of the sort of two hearts of the exhibition, um, which is the Romance and War series, for which Lichtenstein is extremely well known. Um, I'm sure that many of you, either when you were growing up or have children, um, who had a poster of um, some desolate heroine or some virile pilot um, on, their, on the walls of their bedroom. This is what Lichtenstein is known for. This is what he um, has become. Even if people don't know the name Roy Lichtenstein, they certainly know the images. It's instantly identifiable, and, and identified, and it has been this kind of style of particularly a comic strip style is ubiquitous in advertising now. Go down to the subway or to the um, tubes, and you see images that are that are kind of Lichtenstein in a way. So here we are in the center of um, probably about six or seven years maximum of time that he was spending in, on this kind of content. But he then had three additional decades of work that he worked on as a painter until he died in 1997. He was born in 1923 and Luke Mickey, the first, the first sort of identifiable um, carrier of his style, um, really wasn't shown until 1984, although it was conceived in 1961. So he was pushing 40 by the time he got to um, actually work out what his own style was, a situation that's actually quite at odds with what is happening nowadays when artists make it in their early 20s and mid-20s. But it, um, the fact that he came to his style relatively late um, means very little apart from the fact that um, maybe he came having worked as a painter, been trained as a painter, came to a moment of, of realization not only that he wanted to continue but also with um, um, in creating kind of an, an idiom that kept going throughout his life even though he was dealing with different kinds of content. very end of the exhibition and you see these two big series in which he was working the nudes very large nudes in the sort of three galleries before the end and the Chinese landscapes when you look at those the, although the content is very different what he was trying to achieve as a painter um, was very consistent with what he was trying to achieve here in, in these images. So that's one principal issue that we wanted to sort of explore and demonstrate, this show being the first retrospective since he died. And so therefore, although there was a retrospective in 1994 um, at the Guggenheim in New York, it didn't include the last great series, three great series of works that he was doing. So this is the first complete retrospective that you will have seen. They are images that have been reworked, as you'll see in the little vitrine there, connected with, with Wham, where he is co-opting an image that doesn't have an original. It is already a copy of something else. Some of the black and white images in there come from newspapers. Those don't have original artwork. They are reproduced. So what he's doing is that he's saying, we are living in this media-saturated moment, and everything that we have around us has been mediated in some way. It is a copy of a copy of a copy. What he's doing is he's saying, I'm taking these images that we all think we know so well, and he is meshing it with the DNA of painting. He is continuing a tradition that becomes more and more obvious as you go through the exhibition of a painter who is dealing with the, the um, essential elements of painting, Colour, form, line. And he's then making a fourth aspect, which is style. And so what is important about showing this work now, and why it's important for you to sort of see the whole of, is that although he's identified with these images, when you get to the end, you realise that everything that you're looking at is identifiable 
uh, is identified as a Liechtenstein. It is, it's, it's perfectly obvious. And then what you have to do is to unpick the riddle of how he managed to achieve that. And that's what the show illustrates. It's up to you to ask those questions of yourselves. Thank you, Sheena.